Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Married to Film. Listen, here's part two. Where you going? It's all yours. What's your job then? To babysit me? What are you? Mr. Wigmore's chief lackey? Henchman? No title? Plenty of bucks though. Mm. Such as? I get to meet so many people. Well, cheers then. Tell me, Perky. Are you happy? Quinn? No, you're not. Well, I've got a great job, lots of money, I travel the world. Why wouldn't I be happy? Have you ever been in love? <laughs> Thousands of times. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spectacular, consciousness-altering love. Do you know what that looks like? I wasn't aware that love looked like anything. I've seen it, mate. On the plane back from Sydney. Is that so? Well, we were on the same flight, so... Maybe I saw it too. Nope. Trust me, you didn't. Oh, delight me. Who's this woman? Two rows in front of me, in handcuffs. Same as a cop. He looked at me, knew I was holding. If I didn't take action, I'd be caught. So I got up, went to the left, proceeded to eliminate the evidence by swallowing my stash. And at that exact moment, we had turbulence. I choked. The entire bag of heroin was stuck in my throat. It's, uh, it's over. Everything starts to go dark. I'm just looking into the abyss, and then I see uh, a woman, blonde, rapturously beautiful, and I know her. We're together. It's like. We've always been and always will be feeling this. Clear? No, baby. Love. Oh, yeah, clear. When you said it, I said it. I was thinking cake. And just as I'm about to be engulfed by. When you say a blind, that's what I open my eyes. No, no, it's clear. And this sobbing idiot is standing there mm -hmm. asking me if I'm okay. <laughs> but I saw it. Just for a moment, I saw what it was like. Poetry by love. You, know, you should you should write a song about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Poor suicidal rock star. But I've seen something real. I've seen the truth. You know, that's not the truth. You wanna know the real truth, face? Right now you have a choice. You can keep on drinking, or you can come with me. Now before you make your choice, realize that if you stay here, it will very likely result in the extermination of your musical career. And if I go with you, 20 minutes, you'd be luxuriating in a five-star hotel, right on the harbor front. Charles Whitmore, one of the most powerful men in this town, will owe you a fever. I feel sorry for you, mate. You think you're happy? You think you got it all? This, your life. You don't. <laughs> Why, because none of it's real? All right, Mr. Hume, how about I offer you a choice? What's that? I can either show you what I'm talking about, or you can get out of the car. <laughs> well, in God's name, what I want to get out of the car. <laughs> in 
the world. a pretty bad bump in your accident. Any nausea? No. Double vision? No, listen, I need to find the man that was brought in here with. How about hallucinations? What do you mean? Hallucinations? Seeing things that aren't there? I'm not sure. Well, your CAT scan was inconclusive. I'm gonna send you downstairs for an MRI. No, I don't have time for this. I need to find the man I came in here with. I'm afraid you're not finding anyone until we know what's going on inside your brain. Panic button. You need to stop, press it. Try not to. So we have to start all over again from the beginning. Be in that booth over there, you'll be able to hear me. 30 minutes, okay? Man. Oh no, we automatically panicking. Wow. We automatically pushing that button as soon as you just bang! Wow. Bang! after this this doesn't matter none of this matters all that matters is that we felt it you want to try and stop me look hey where are you going if i were you stop worrying about me start looking for penny what do you mean he's gone but he escaped. He knocked over a doctor with a bloody crash cart and then ran out of the hospital. And you let him go? He's a junkie who drove my car into the ocean, Charles. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. And I'm thrilled you survived. When I give you a job to do, I expect you to do it. With all due respect, sir, it's just a bloody concert. I'll tell you what, Desmond. You can't do it on the Why don't you tell Mrs. Whitmore it's only a bloody concert? <laughs> Mr. Hume? <clears throat> so you never met the boss's wife, huh? No. Good luck. Please tell me. Barely. How is it that someone in your line of work is not aware that the butter knife is placed handle to the right, blade facing left, just so? Mrs. Whitmore? Yes. My name is Desmond Hume. I work for your husband. Oh, of course, Mr. Hume. Charles has told me so much about you. It's a travesty we haven't met before. No, it's about time. Well, the feelings mutual, Mrs. Whitmore. Oh, please, it's 
enemies. Enemies. <laughs> So, uh, what crisis forced Charles to send his best fix-it man into the bowels of charity balls? <coughs> well, Eloise, um, I'm deeply sorry, but it appears as if uh, Dry Shaft won't be able to perform alongside your son. And uh, I take full responsibility. <laughs>